So in this video, I want to talk about something that one of my viewers brought up in my last video. Um, in the comments, he's a skier and he asks, what do you do when you get really reactive and how do you get out of that reactive state? He says that the work I do helps him with his skiing, which I love because, you know, guys, you guys know I love skiing a lot. Um, by the way, if you're wondering where I'm at, um, I'm in Tulum, Mexico and uh it's awesome here it's beautiful it's <laughs> really hot out we're gonna take a walk over to a cenote which is a hole in the ground uh created by asteroids that filled with water and this one has some fish in it and stuff like that my ground here in the morning and we're gonna talk about this now in the meantime what do you do when you get reactive this is really an important topic because it doesn't just apply to skiing like he was talking about it applies to conversation with women if you're talking to a beautiful woman and you get really reactive what do you do how do you get over that how do you get past that um what do you do in that moment when you don't have time to run away and get yourself calmed down we're going to be talking about that stuff momentarily but before we do i want to invite you to like subscribe and share of course if you begin a lot of value out of these videos definitely subscribe and I love those comments. I figure out a lot of videos like this one from the comments. So definitely put a comment below. Now let's get started. So back to the topic. Um, by the way, we're heading down the secret pathway to the cenote here. You can see it goes all the way down there. Um, and uh, and uh, one more thing. Um, Somebody asked me why I was wearing the headphones a few weeks ago. I didn't answer his question, I don't think yet. Um, but I wear the headphones when I don't have my microphone available. The adapter for my microphone was missing. So uh, the headphones just have a microphone on it and allows the sound to be a little bit better. Um, okay, so what do you do when you get reactive? Well, I've made a little list here and I'm gonna go through that list. And, uh, and I think that being preemptive, and I'm gonna talk about what I mean by that, is the most important thing being ready ahead of time for reactive moments because you're always going to have reactive moments in your life. When you develop the ability to deal with reactivity in a proactive way, uh, it works a lot better. Now, uh, hopefully the noise isn't going to be a problem. we got some people over here working with some drills up here. Um, here's the cenote I was talking about. And as you can see, I'm going to step in the water here. I like to ground in the water. And that's going to be part of what we're going to be talking about is the earthing or the grounding. You can see the little fish swimming around. It's pretty cool out here. Um, so this is supposedly uh, from, I guess, millions of years ago, someplace an asteroid hit. And then it creates a hole in the ground. They fill with water. And they have them all through this area of Tulum, Mexico. Um, and I think all the way down towards Cancun, I could be wrong. Definitely comment in the video if you know the details of that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, this is really pretty darn cool. Now, this topic, um, I might have to move locations with the drill going on, so we'll figure this out. So this topic, uh, being preemptive, is really important. Um, so I have two videos. The first thing you want to do is practice grounding. That's the most important thing. Get really good at grounding. And I have a, a link in the description to a video on grounding if you don't know how to ground. And if you practice grounding on a regular basis, I mean daily, and if you really want to get good at it, practice it multiple times a day. Set an alarm on your phone. Practice grounding multiple times a day, four or five, six times a day, just for a few minutes each. Inside of a week, you're going to notice a big difference. You want to develop the ability to unconsciously feel your legs all the time, to feel what's going on down in the lower part of the body. It's almost like if I asked you five minutes ago, could you feel your legs? You'd say, yeah, because I can't tell you how many clients I can tell too, by the way, that have no relationship to this part of their body. So when they're talking, they're blabbing, all their energy is raised way high up in their body. They're way up here and they're rolling all over the place and there's a sense of being really ungrounded. The groundedness that you feel in me or that you feel in other men that you often pick up on comes from having this connection to the earth through your legs. It's this sense of that I always have that connection. Even as I'm standing here right now, I really feel the right leg hooking in the ground. 
or I really feel the left leg as I lean on the left or both if I stand on both. And there's a sense of relationship to the earth. So that even when I'm not thinking about it, I've been talking to you guys for the last five minutes, let's say, there's still a sense of awareness. It's unconscious competence of my legs. So get good at grounding. That's number one. There'll be a link in the description to my grounding video. Uh, definitely check that out. That's also a video I'll probably update soon. So keep an eye out for that update. So number two, get in touch with the masculine parts of your body. I just did a video on this. It was really, really did pretty well for my channel, considering my channel does not get marketed much. Um, and the video talked about all the masculine parts of the body, the back, the back of the legs, the outside of the legs, the really putting your conscience in the masculine to set the vulnerable parts of your body, the feminine parts of your body, the parts that feel free to express themselves so that they are not, uh, I'm going to fall here <laughs> so that they, you have, uh, there goes my grounding, right? Um, uh, <laughs> so that they have a sense of freedom. See the whole idea of the masculine, the masculine is a container for the feminine. The feminine is therefore the expressive. When the masculine does its job, when you're in your back and you're in the backs of your arms, you can then express freely with your hands. You can then express freely with your mouth, with your eyes, with your voice tone. But when you're in the front of your body, that's neediness, that's reactivity. And that shuts down your ability to express, but not only be expressive, to be aware. Like for the skier, for example, his ability to ski requires him to be in his frame, to be relaxed, to be powerful. So definitely check that video out on being in the masculine parts of your body and start to develop unconscious competence around that. Just doing a little bit of movement in that area every day for a couple of weeks could be huge for you. You could start with the grounding and then work on that one. Now, I'm going to get into specifics next, and I'm going to get into simple things that you can do when you do get reactive in the moment, but that being preemptive is huge. Um, but when you're in the middle of a conversation with a beautiful woman, when you're out skiing and you get reactive and you don't have time to stop and go practice your grounding, go practice being in the masculine parts of your body, and you need to do something now, what are some of the things you can do? Number one is just checking. Did you unconsciously become disconnected from your grounding or the masculine part of your body? Just start to put awareness in the back and lower part of your body or back into the, to the masculine parts of your body and start to notice what happens. Turn that back on if for whatever reason your mind got racy and you turned it off. And that's really common is the very skill set we know how to do. Sometimes when our mind is racing, we're rushing, we turn it off. So when you take all that energy that's running around in your head and you run it back into the parts of your body where it's supposed to be, this energy can slow down again. Awareness can open back up and you can kind of calm down and start to become proactive again. And a big part of proactivity is opening the heart. So when you get grounded, you get in the masculine parts of your body, that should allow you to open your heart more again. Okay, now we're farther away. There was a leaf blower that picked up, so I had to move again. Um, but number four, let's talk about earthing. Earthing is akin to grounding, right? You are grounding with earthing. If you haven't heard of earthing, definitely look up earthing. It's basically one of my favorite mechanisms to calm the body down or relax the body. That's why I was going over to the cenote I talked about earlier. Earthing works with the natural principle of nature. Grounding is an active principle you can train. I can learn to ground and do grounding practices right through my rubber flip-flops. Earthing, on the other hand, you want to take off the flip-flops and work with nature. Um, earthing, for example, I would take off my shoes and put my bare feet in the grass, the dirt, even concrete that's untreated can have some earthing slash grounding principles. What happens in earthing, if you actually study it, is that electrons come up from the earth and they actually get rid of inflammation in the body, calm the body, pull awareness down in the body. And I kind of be honest, it works like a charm. I love to earth. I love to get my shoes off. I love to put my bare feet in the ground. I do it every morning with the sunrise. I do it in the afternoon. I do it in the evening. And I do my grounding practices to develop greater and greater grounding capacity with my shoes on. Um, while I'm earthing in the sauna, I'm constantly putting the two together so that my grounding becomes better and better. This calms the body and pulls you deeper and deeper into the body. So I highly recommend you check out 
the principles of earthing, how that works, what you can learn from earthing, and how much that can help to calm you down. Other ways you can earth is you can use your hands. You can touch the, if you can't take your shoes off, touch the ground with your hands. Um, touch the earth, the grass, the dirt um, with your uh, with your hands, with your feet, or maybe grab a tree. You know, a living tree is a really powerful way to practice grounding. So right now I'm getting my feet in the water. You can see out here and uh, finding a nice location that's uh, beautiful for you guys to enjoy. Okay, so the earthing is number four. Now, let's get on to uh, let's get on to number five. Okay, so if you are really taken out, let's say uh, in this case the skier asked me this question. Let's say he's getting nervous before a race, or he's he's uh, uh, a little out of it and. Uh, He's been, you know, training all day. He's a little out of it, getting a little reactive. And by the way, this is how I hurt myself with skiing. So a little story here, a little side story, is I have a um, AC separation. It was a pretty bad one. You can see the bump right here. Had to have surgery from it, actually. Most people don't have surgery from their AC separations. When I was in a camp in Switzerland, learning to jump and do different tricks while skiing, I was doing a Switch 180, and somehow Switch 180 ain't even that crazy of a trick. When I landed, I caught an edge and slammed my shoulder and almost knocked myself out through my helmet and ended up having to get surgery. Luckily it was four, I was on the, I was three and a half days into a five day trip. So I still got a lot of training and it was great. Um, some of you guys remember that from the videos. Now, what I would do, cause in that moment I knew I was reactive. I knew I was out of it and I ignored it. So you have to turn on and I'm working on this myself a mechanism to not ignore when I'm getting reactive. That's when we do stupid stuff. That's when we hurt ourselves. That's how I hurt myself. And the mechanism was screaming at me to take a break. And I did, I took a momentary break. Um, but the problem was that I really wanted to get out there and jump again. And I just didn't listen. I took a momentary break. I needed a longer break. I needed to do something else. I needed to go off. And, I'm, and this is the next thing I'm gonna talk about and ski somewhere else in control, doing something I know how to do really well and working on getting into flow state and grooving through subtle carving. Something easy, get on an easy trail, go down the mountain a few times, get my mind calmed down. Uh, and this is the next one, this is number five, is go find something, distract yourself and find something you're good at, something that you can do that you know you can do well. I know if I went down onto a nice little intermediate run, a low intermediate run, and started working on some deep carves or even a beginner run, and just worked on really carving deep and taking my time and moving slow, and just worked on getting that groove back, that sense of calmness in my body, getting the mind slowed down, a sense of rhythm, that would have been huge. That would have been uh, awesome for getting my grounding back and uh and getting my energy back out of the reactiveness and then come back 20 30 minutes later ready to go uh so that's number five number six is i would have found something that i know brings me down into my body like the the skiing was the last example doing something i can groove at but there's other uh, anchors too i have soundtracks on spotify that really bring me down in my body. They're, they're soundtracks of my spiritual music, my calming music that I have anchored to because I've listened to it so much over the last few years that I would have listened to those tracks and brought myself down to my body, got myself more relaxed and it wouldn't have taken long. I've used those for years when I was in apathy to calm myself down when I was working on deep emotional stuff with my releasing, processing deep emotions and these tracks are magical for me because I've associated them so well with the work. So they're basically an anchor. So six is find an anchor. An anchor could be as simple as a touch, something you touch your fingers together, hold it every time you get grounded and get a sense of that so that when you're in the middle of something stressful and something's not working, if you've done this touch a thousand times while in the middle of being grounded while getting deep, this is an NLP concept, you do the touch again, three fingers or four fingers, whatever it is that you use, and suddenly your body, all your neurochemistry in a sense, remembers that, that moment, that feeling, that sensation and pulls you back down into that state of being. So having an anchor, in this case, the anchor can be music, but it can also be something physical like a touch. It could be a word with a touch that you say like home, home. And that's another one. 
And it's powerful when you've developed it earlier, like I talked about earlier, when you've gotten the anchor ready early, it can be a very powerful process. So the last one, the anchor is really powerful when you're in the moment, when you don't have time to go off and find your groove, to do some meditation, to do some grounding, and I gotta deal with it. You know, if you gotta get into a race right away, then you're skiing, for example, like uh, the person that asked me this question, uh, having an anchor can be a huge one, that especially if you've got the anchor and you've rehearsed it with uh, mental memory, imagery, other stuff that I talk about. But uh, another one that you can use in the moment, if you're in conversation with a beautiful woman, let's say, and you're flowing and you're having a good time and you start to get into your head, is take the energy away. In the pickup community, they would call it a rock step, right? This sense of looking away for a moment. But I wanna take it a step further. I've talked about this in other videos. When you rock step, what you're really doing is you're taking the energy. If my energy is 100% focused on you right now, and I'm really connecting to you, but I'm getting in my head and I can feel it happen. I take that energy, the conduit, and I focus it on something over there, like that tree, for example, and I'll point it at that tree and I'll lock in on that tree, receive that tree for a second, or maybe there's a painting with some artwork, or maybe there's a friend across the room, and I'll receive that person in through the conduit, which I talk about in a lot of my videos. And I let whatever I'm looking at calm me, relax me. So if I've been doing the heart walks, the, the vulnerability walks, things like that, and I've gotten good at them, I can turn and do that with something in the environment for a moment. Ground out, ground on this foot, receive that energy and then come back, look at the person again. So if I'm doing it with you, literally, I'd be talking to you, I'm having a good time, I'm starting to get in my head, I'm starting to think, I might rock step over, look at something over there, take it in, feel down my leg, feel my body, feel my heart, receive that energy, I won't go blind, and then I come back. And what do I mean by not going blind? I won't go like this, I actually take something in the distance while grounding. It's a more advanced concept uh, when you understand it, but it's just, you gotta put all the parts together, but it works like magic. Okay, so let's go to the next one. I think, are we on six or seven? I don't even know now, but another one we can do um, is uh, you can shift the location. Like I've been doing in this video, I've been, I don't, I've been shifting the location around a little bit on you guys, moving to different places, partially because of noise. You can hear that noise in the background but also because it just makes for a more interesting video. So I'll probably be doing that more often. But shifting location can be huge if you're in a conversational situation. Let's say you're talking to some pretty girl, you're having a good time, you're a little in your head. Maybe you just move across the room to a location you like a little better. Or maybe you just move just so you can change the energy and the state because it was getting a little funky. Moving from one location to another can reset so many different dynamics. And um, it's powerful. Uh, when you think about it. Okay, let's talk about one more. And this should be obvious, but for a lot of people it's not, and that's meditation. Just stop and meditate, calm your mind down. Don't release, if your mind's racing, just meditate, open your heart, sit down and calm your body, stillness. Internal stillness is what you're practicing. And if you've been meditating for a while and you've got meditation under your belt, just like any anchor, the meditation will be anchored to you. And when you go to meditate, you'll find the moment you start, your body will start relaxing. I've done enough meditation and releasing over the years that I can just open my heart and start relaxing. And it happens fast, it's anchored into my body. So regular straight up meditation practice can be huge. And even now I've reached a point where let's say I'm in a conversation and I take a moment and I shut my eyes and I just feel open my heart and ground. And then I come back, I can completely reset myself. And it's funny because in today's conversation, in today's climate, people might ask, what are you doing? And I'd be like, ah, oh, just doing a quick meditation. You could just be honest because people don't care today. They'll think it's funny. They'll be curious. It's a, it's a good conversational topic. See the jacuzzi, the pool, the interior of this apartment or condo or whatever it is. Pretty cool. I love this space. Um, so, uh, so that's my list for today. I'm sure you guys have other ideas. What do you do when you get in your head, when you get racy, when you're not present to calm yourself down in the moment? And what do you do to practice so that you're ready to calm yourself down when the moment happens? Like doing regular meditation, movement, yoga practice, things like this, learning to feel your body. Um, I'd love to hear the, what that is. Definitely put that in the comment and 
let us know. And if you like this video and you want more videos like this, like I can do some videos on the power of visual rehearsal and all that kind of stuff and deeper, uh, some other mind stuff, definitely put that in the comment because I figure out what videos to do from your comments. And I'm gonna be looking at the last set of videos uh, over the next few weeks and looking for more videos to create for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember, only the confident really live. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, have a beautiful day.